I think I'm ready. No, I don't think I'm ready at all. Uh, folks, welcome aboard. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, time for the Margu campaign, the three generational uh, scenario for D and D. Uh, these guys are off in the Nizumi ruins, off somewhere in the Tabaxi wasteland, or I'm sorry, jungle rather, still a wasteland for them. Um, and they are currently trying to see how much trouble they can get into exploring slash um, stealing from old ruins. Uh, and they'll be fine. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to buy our cool stuff. Uh, go ahead. It's down there somewhere. If you want to join us in chat, it's down there somewhere, I think, maybe. Uh, sometimes I forget to put it up there. Most importantly, if you want to be on a one shot or you want to be on the talk show, M Hobo Inc. Twitter gmail hit us up we'll go ahead and get you in there uh and you can have almost as much fun as these guys are having we'd like to thank our uh sponsors pirate dog dice whose dice tend to roll a little bit high especially this red bloody beauty the dog uh, today uh and of course odd fish games odd fish games if your game stinks get a little packet of scent going on and make your game smell a whole lot better. Uh, folks, before we go ahead and do a recap, let's introduce you to the victim, I mean, players today. We will start with the youngest Frank of the group. Who are you and who are you playing? I am Frankie Orsina the third. I am playing Manfang, a dragonborn fighter with a, uh, who's also a ninja turtle in disguise. Yeah, you still have that stupid thing, don't you? Yes, I do, because I'm a ninja troll. You know, I wonder if it has fleas. Or no, mites. Maybe it has mites. I'm a ninja turtle. I like mites. Uh, no. no, you don't like any of those. Our gambler, shall we say, AJ. AJ, who are you? Who are you playing? Hello, I'm AJ, and I'm playing Felix, the rogue gambler. That's the last sane one in the party. That's, that's hilarious that you think that. <laughs> uh, I'm the only sane one in the party, or the only crazy one. I saw that or in a movie once. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's lost but you. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Next up is Jason. Jason, who are you? Who are you playing? I'm playing the gnomish uh, beer magistrate, Copious Vol Bitters the Third, um, Touch of Magic, and uh, more than a little bit of ego. A little bit? It's a, it's a lot more than a little bit. A little bit of yeah, yeah, I got to gotta, gotta go with him. Uh, and our elder statesman. Who are you and who are you playing? I am Frank Sr., grandfather to Man Fang, playing Leaf the Druid. Cynical Druid at this point in time. And Copius has enough ego for everybody in the party. Uh, family love is a beautiful thing. Folks, as I pointed out, uh, these guys are currently searching the Nazumi ruins in the land of the Tabaxi, the jungle of the Tabaxi, actually. They are overheating. Uh, some of them have uh, been uh, nipped by some uh, lycanthropes. Some of them were nipped by love. Um, <laughs> and we aren't really sure if that love came at a cost. Uh, fortunately for these guys, I think the true hero off screen is... Uh, Phineas Latrec, their yes. uh, sturdy guide of gnomish descent, uh, finder <laughs> of lost things, and lover of all. He's also the consumer of blue java bananas, which caused him some stress. Uh, their guide has brought them to the Nizumi ruins through a dangerous five-day trek where they have also found another gnome from the previous uh retinue pierre glanbone uh pierre has managed to survive within the nizumi ruins intact uninjured and seemingly in high spirits uh because he has found a significant cachet of old ale that he has been surviving upon uh he has warned the party about a few things and the party has also witnessed the beloved gemstone high above the temple in its own secluded walled in area it is encrusted in diamonds and certainly worth a king's ransom but it's got that uh, uh what do you call that thing the dragon <laughs> that, that guards it now we are one player short slash two players short today so i think today would be a good day to go after that cluster of diamonds mm -hmm. i think these four i think it's their day to shine <laughs> 
we can do anything. We're the best. Yeah, that's that's right. That's what I heard. That's what the tattoo on uh, my lower back says. My tramp stamp. Uh, yeah, you heard it. Copious price said it. <laughs> <laughs> or or his bards. Uh, folks, as I said uh, last time, uh, well, actually, I didn't say it. Copious was kind enough to mention it. Uh, they had a little butt kicking uh, contest at which they came out on the lesser end as they investigated the library of the Nazumi ruins. However, they found several interesting items that all radiated magic, including Felix's catch of magic lips. We'll see how that one plays out. Uh, at the end of the last session, uh, our missing player, Haggis Crabstain, uh, took off across the Great Plaza and headed for their base of operations where the two gnomes were found stinking drunk. Uh, fortunately, he was chased by giant vultures who did not catch him. Uh, and then a very large, very dark, very evil, sinister kind of creature flew over the plaza pointing out that they do not rule this area. It does. So, gentlemen, uh, as we start it, I believe we left off with you guys securing your battle stations and uh, taking a rest for the night, did we not? Let's yes. start on the next day. This would be day seven. Uh, what would you like to do? You notice that both Phineas and Pierre have toxic noxious gas from whatever alcoholic beverage they were consuming and they seem just a twinge hung over uh finney or i'm sorry pierre belches loudly as he awakes and asks you guys if we can go home yet okay and it'll be at least another day before we're ready to leave uh at, at this point, to the rest of the party, Copius wants to, to check. It seems like we've investigated some of the key things we wanted to look at. So we're left with going to where the, the gym is or trying to get access to the temple that's guarded by the statue. Hmm. What's everyone's thoughts on this? Do we scout out? towards where the gym is and see what that looks like. Uh, I'm a little leery about leaving that temple unchecked behind us when we go heading up that way. Maybe we should at least try to investigate that and see what's going on before we move on. Yeah, I'd be interested in going to the temple before we head up to the gym. Do we, we have that statue was chasing them all over the, the courtyard before um it wasn't really chasing though it was spinning around it couldn't it didn't move off its pedestal it just spun around so if we hurry and get uh hustle past it possibly if we go in a group we can get inside before it activates that is true it uh seemed to be cemented to the cobblestones of the plaza and that was right here am i assuming i'm assuming it's too big to go through the door to the temple anyways uh, you have not gotten close enough to see what oh. the alcove hides. Okay. But it has not moved from its stationary position in the front doors. So maybe we can do a little experiment and um, have uh, see how close we can get before it activates and see okay. what we can find out in the alcove. I would say we put the, the shell boy up in the front. He can handle the most damage and he has oh, pretty no. good AC. <laughs> No, I'm a, I'm a ninja turtle. I need to be sneaking around. Shell boy, you should be back to uh, all your hit points. I am. Okay. <laughs> so you'll be really, you'll be a really healthy corpse. Is what he's saying. Yeah. You'll leave a beautiful corpse. That's the goal. Well, I, I think I would think beautiful's in the eye of the beholder. So <laughs> that's in a different location in the yeah. ruins. <laughs> So it's it's entirely up to you guys. You have a few other buildings that you haven't investigated. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, in this courtyard. Why don't we check those real quick first? Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and throw that back up there because I love sharing my screen. <clears throat> so uh, these buildings right here, this small cluster. Uh, you know what? Let's let's do some cool stamps. You guys are all stars. 
Uh, these three buildings <clears throat> appear to be defunct. Uh, there's a lot of rubble in there, and the now somewhat sober Pierre uh, can go ahead and point out that uh, I've been through there. There's nothing there. Uh, <laughs> now, on the back side, he said there is something in this building, uh, but he hasn't really gone in there because there's <gasps> nefarious uh, uh, problems there that uh, I do not wish to intercede, and those people seem as though uh, they can uh, handle themselves nicely there. Wait, there's people in there? Well, people in a looser sense. Um, Rats? Skinned people? That's gross. What's that word that you guys, uh, you big people use? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Skeletons. That's what's in there. Lovely. Enchanted oh, skeletons or just okay. dead skeletons? Do they move around at night? They they move around and you know, uh, they move in and out of the building, but uh, mm. I, I think they were all worshippers of some dumbass snake god because of all the marble outside the temple is dedicated serpents. And I'm not a big mm. snake guy. Uh, over on this backside, mm. uh, I've been to this one. Mm. Uh, I've been inside it briefly. It's an old inn, and there's something moving around in there at all times of night. I just, I just did not feel that in my uh, incapacitated state, uh, being a solo adventure and being more of a scholar i did not feel the need the need for speed uh but if you guys uh want to do that uh in this block them's the two areas that i would check on the most okay which one do you want to go to first to the skeleton place i want to take a gander at this snake god outside it's going to be a giant <laughs> skeleton. What else is there to know? Copious, what do you think? I think uh, Thulsa Doom is waiting, so let's go view the snake god. <laughs> <laughs> who was that guy in He-Man? I forget who it was. Skeletor? Skeletor. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it seems as though we're going to go to the Temple of the Serpent. Is that the yep. general consensus I'm hearing? Yeah, that yeah. never went wrong in any movie ever. Ever. No. Uh, uh, Pierre says there is a back door. I've kind of got it secured, uh, and it'll be quicker to get there. Or you can go to the front door and zip around. Well, Felix is known as a back door man. Why don't we just <laughs> we'll do the back door? His lead here. It's my favorite. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. After you guys go, I'm securing it. That's the only concern I have. If we <laughs> open the back door, we're we have to go all the way out to the front door. Uh, at least Pierre has made that abundantly clear. There's so. no retreat. No retreat, no surrender. Well, there is a lot of retreat options. We just don't do this. Well, one. when was the last time this group retreated anywhere? <laughs> we don't retreat. No idea. Never. In for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, right, Scarface. You know, we could always make him go with us. I, uh, no, I will not be going with you. I, I think that whole gnome that that has the stink of uh, a favorite of the gods all over it. I'm not touching that gnome. <laughs> Everybody, perception check, please. Oh lord, here we go. That's what I always like to hear when I DM. Oh, 19, 19, <laughs> 20, 20, 25. Have you noticed that uh, when you were attempting to go ahead and get Pierre to come with you, he shuffles off to his favorite perch uh the blanket covered trunk looking thing uh it seems to be his home spot uh other than that you don't notice much of anything else hey, Pierre, what 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 you got under that rug anyways these are my last surviving belongings this is all of the things i hmm. own in this can world. i see it can i see your stuff yeah i'll show you some of my sure. stuff I'm yeah, not sure yeah. I'm You show enough. me yours and I'll show you mine. <laughs> yeah. And he asks, uh, uh, what do you got, man thing? You, uh, you came in on a freaking zonkey. I'll tell you what, I'll trade you a peek for a ride on the zonkey. 
Or you can have behind what's behind curtain number two. Don't don't <laughs> don't listen to it, Man Fang. No. This, this money hall thing is going to go upside down. I really want to know since I had a chest guy. I'm fine. Fine. I don't take no deal. All right. Wayne Brady says okay. So who's off for going through the back door? I'm all right with it. Hey, let's go. Okay, uh, it takes several minutes for him to remove some boxes with the help of Phineas Latrec, who is happy to go ahead and I'll keep an eye on this guy. For yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's got to guard the zonkeys. <laughs> you know, I, what, what if your Haggis friend here takes off with your zonkeys and leaves you guys high and dry? Yeah, that's true. Honestly, if I'm, I'm your buddy. I, yeah, of I got all the you people here. that are left behind, I think Haggis and Robert are the two we should be most worried about. <laughs> and Phineas Latrec yeah. agrees. So right. uh, they uh, move, move the boxes uh, to reveal a back door. Apparently, uh, this used to be a double entrance on this tavern, one in the front, one in the back, both linking main roads. Uh, as you take a peek outside, you notice a... <laughs> Well, there's no tumbleweeds in a jungle. Uh, you notice some uh, dead foliage from the leaves, some fronds. Uh, move across as there is a slight breeze right to left. Uh, and Pierre points out you'll be going left. Uh, so uh, survival, not even a check, would let you know that... The breeze is going to be blowing across you. So anything with uh, particularly good sensors uh, will smell you coming. I don't think skeletons have noses, so I, I'm not going to worry too much about this. Oh, they do. dragons, vultures, giant vultures, and rat people. Where rats. <laughs> uh, but as you peek out, who wants to peek out? <clears throat> yeah, I'll peek. Oh, I'll okay. let the dragon thing peek. Uh, Leaf and Manfang, give me investigation checks. Oh, uh, no, this is not. No. not what did you think Pekin was going <laughs> to involve? 17. I know I had to investigate, but I was just going to look around the corner. I'm just going to look at stuff. Yeah, that's going to be no hope at all. Yeah, it's no. That's three. That's a three. <laughs> I have, I have uh, negative three investigation. So. Man, <laughs> wow. Uh, Manfang uh, notices uh, the burnt shell of an old building directly across the boulevard while Leaf the Druid we're A-OK -okay to move down the street. I'm certain of it. So, Alright, let's go. Um, I, I think we should let the gumshoe dragon thing move in the front because he's so perceptive. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got that Shell on your chest or your back? Chest. You're more on your backwards, I'm pretty sure. But at least you're rotund. Uh, so, Manfang, are you going to go ahead and lead him down the alley? Yeah. Fair Good enough. Uh, trusting in the fact that the druid has way more sensibility than you, you blindly follow his lead and you head right on out into the street whereupon you find not a thing is moving uh as you move up to the temple uh you notice great old greenish pitted marble columns in the shape of intertwining snakes moving up over the lentil of the doorway uh, inside the darkened area. It appears to be almost like a shotgun house where it is longer than it is wide. And the uh, smell of decay is inside. I will take perception checks by all of you, please. 19. 23. 24. Man Fang is too busy examining the coiled snakes on the marble pillars however felix copious and leaf the druid look inside and notice the skin of a large serpent as if it has shed its prior skin oh boy goes bigger now <laughs> bigger bigger better who had the largest role there was it leaf i had a 24 
Uh, you also notice a variety of bones, uh, possibly humanoid, scattered throughout. Uh, there are old warped wooden pews uh, leading up to an altar, but it's very dark and the roof is intact, so you cannot see all the way back there because it is at least... 61 feet away for those uh, dark vision. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take a step forward so I can see all the way back there. You uh, look in there. Does anybody else uh, wander in with Leaf? Uh, is it just, totally dark? I don't have dark vision. I do. It's it's <laughs> totally dark. That's why he said it was 61 feet. Yeah. I don't have dark vision. I'm just going to walk through the and walk. Or is it no door left on hinges? What's the nope, No door. Okay. No door left. I <laughs> Hodor. I want to, Hodor. Hodor. I want it. to uh, just take a quick gander, make sure there's no apparent traps of any kind before I stick my head through. And I'm going to step in and move into shadow as I go through the door. As Leaf walks through, you check for traps, but find none. <laughs> go, go ahead and give me a. Uh, I don't know. Give me a. Give me a roll for your hide in shadows. Uh, Fifteen. You feel that you are pretty well masked. Uh, Felix, did you say you were going to stand in the doorway and watch? Yes, yeah, silhouetted uh, in the doorway. Yeah, though. that's a terrible idea. I will also step inside. I it's, don't think I'm going to see anything, though, because... The ambient light is only going to trail in a few feet. Uh, you, however, will have come in just behind Copious, so you will know where he is. Leaf, however, is standing there like a freaking superhero. Yep. Surveying the area, Manfang, are you going in or staying out? I'll go in with them. I, okay, I'm going to be the brave one today. Uh, odd, even, even, copious. Uh, to your left is a small pot with some uh oily based material in it, possibly some type of a luminary. Uh, if you have flint and tinder, uh, leaf, you look in and you see a great stone altar and then a carved stone curtain that's a semicircle around the altar uh and it is irregularly shaped uh but there is an etched serpent uh waved onto the stone behind mm -hmm. the altar uh you also spot at least one maybe femur maybe tibula uh, some kind of bone atop the altar Copious, would you like to light the oil? Yes, just for my good pal Felix's benefit, I'm going to strike the oil and then move far away from it. Uh, flick, 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 hoof. Uh, it illuminates, and then you notice that it is fed from a reservoir that runs down the wall, down the wall, down the wall down the wall, igniting several pots along the way. <laughs> the good news is, Felix can now see everything. The bad news is, copious shadows are oh. gone. <laughs> uh, everybody perception. Oh boy. 24. 8. 15. <laughs> Felix was looking directly at the pot and is now temporarily blinded. Everybody else <laughs> notices that the magnification of light is rather astonishing, and it is lit up faded painted murals along the wall. Uh, the general description is that of vipers and serpents, so this is definitely the temple of the serpent. However, uh, Copius and Leaf, you hear... Just a scrape coming from the back near the uh, altar curtain wall. Oh, boy. I'm going to let Felix know that I hear something since he was right behind me. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's still got the white spots. <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing with man fangs. Okay, everybody is focused in on it. Uh, the illumination that extends behind the curtain wall is now casting a shadow a very large shadow, uh, something is behind that curtain wall and it is moving right to left. Can we see the shadow of it beyond the curtain wall? Looks like a cobra. 
Well, I was going to ask, is it moving like a snake? Well, it's just a head. But you know what they always say, the light makes everything look bigger, right? Sure it yeah. does. Yeah, I've used that yeah. line many times. Actually, you're better off with the lights out. We'll go, uh, some kind of snake, huh? Moments later, you all find out what kind of snake it is. It is a skinless snake. One might even say Naga-ish. Roll initiative. I was going to start backing up towards the doorway. <laughs> hey, hey, hey Manfang, go get him. Go okay. get him. Yeah. Okay. Thir at 13. Matt 13. 20 already. Matt 20. 24 total. 13. <laughs> and Felix. Eight. No! Those I'm getting all the low rolls out now. Ooh, Two now 20s. Uh, Copious, I will give you the option. Uh, we're both going to act at the same time. Would you like to go first, or would you like me to ruin everybody's life? I ruin everyone's life. Give me... Let's see who I will ruin first. Man Fang. Of course it's me. Give me a DC 12 versus wisdom, please. Great. Great, because you know I'm so intelligent. <laughs> ah, actually, plus, I got a plus one. It's okay. And that means your roll is? It's not, no, this is horrible. It's, I got two. Uh, everybody notices that Man Fang appears to be paralyzed in fear. <laughs> he wore his brown pants today for this very reason. Uh, Copious, you've got about 58 feet between you and this creature that is coming around the curtain wall. Uh, what would you like to do? How far away is Man Fang from the creature? Six, so he is 52 feet away from the creature. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to cast an attack spell at the creature. That's really all I can do at this point. So Eldritch Blast, uh, but I want, to, I want to take whatever movement I have to move towards the door. Sure, it's like within grasp, so you aren't too far away. All right, I'm, oh, that was really bad. <laughs> really bad? Oh, not quite bad enough for me. Uh, that moves us on to the pair of 13s, Leaf and Manfang. Leaf, will start with you because Manfang is going to get a roll on his turn. I'm going to cast a flaming spear at it. Okay. Land it in front of it, I guess. 22. Nicely done. Easily hits this creature. I'm trying to see what my yeah, you get a big bonus for those giant creatures. Let the record show uh, eleven has hosed you guys. <laughs> uh, fair enough, Man Fang. Go ahead and make your wisdom roll again. This will be your turn. This is the day. It's almost. It's nine. Oh, it's pretty good. You are still paralyzed in fear, leading us to Felix. Felix, uh, one Eldritch Blast has failed, one Flaming Sphere has succeeded, and Man Fang is pooping himself on a <laughs> pew. <laughs> that is scary. Hey, thanks for the visual there, bub. I will take one of my normal arrows out of the quiver and shoot it at the head of this serpent. So 22 for the hit. Easily. 15 then, is your magic number to hit this thing. Then 9 damage. Nicely done. You guys are carving this thing up nice. But that brings us to round 2. Copious, do you want to go or you want me to go? You can go. Mm, I'm going to do Sacred Flame as I move towards people. That's a two. I'm going to move towards Felix's. I am not a big fan of arrow, so I will shoot a sacred flame at you. And I will miss wildly as I scorch the stone above your head as you 
duck dive dodge and dodgeball it. Uh, Copious, you're up. Duck stick dive and dodge. Now, Copious, please note that the creature will be within melee range next round as it is just slicing through these old pews. Ouch. That that's painful there. Uh, how about a D four? Uh, I'm showing Manfang one, Felix two, Copious three, and Leaf four. Felix takes one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is payback yeah. for those arrows last yeah, time. I, I gotta it. think there's a little poetic justice involved. Uh huh. Uh huh. it now. That's halved, right? That's the half. That's the half. That's the half. Four damage. Uh, Leaf, you're up. How far did the creature move? Uh, it moved about 20 feet. 20 feet? 20, 25, yeah. I'll move the spear right up against it again. It's, it needs to do a deck saving throw. 14 plus 3, 17. It's quite dexterous. Okay. Is that your turn? What I, I'm not, I don't. Is that all I can do, or is am I able to do something else? You should have a bonus action, I would think. Okay, and if not, I'll give you a bonus action. Okay, I'll take it. Um, because you're gonna need it. <laughs> I'm not problem. So it's close enough now. I should be. How close is it to us? Melee distance next round. So it's more than 15 feet away. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Uh, you can shoot Manfang at advantage because he's paralyzed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could do that, couldn't I? <laughs> Perhaps I, enough I'm damage to, might I'm wake him up. I'm trying to find my thing. I want, I want to uh, clean up Manfang if I can find the right spell. Um. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I'm sucking at this. Okay. I'm going to throw uh, cast Lesser Restoration on Manfang. There you go. It removes a condition. Uh, Manfang, you snap out of your paralysis and find yourself almost face-to-face, -face, uh, since you crept in a little bit deeper, uh, with a giant skinless snake. It's your turn. And you may act as you want. Um, so I'm not going to go charging at it. That'd just be a dumb thing. You mean like right here, charge at it? Like yeah. right here? No, I don't want to do that. Not like over there, like right here. <laughs> I'm going to shoot an arrow at it because I don't want to get close to it at all. I, I, it's, are you sure? Yeah. You understand it's it? got a big flaming spear behind it too, by the way. Spear. Spear. Round thing. What would you say, Copious? To say, what's the distance between Manfang and the, the, the Naga at this point? Five feet. Yeah, Manfang, <laughs> you're in melee combat. <laughs> I don't think you're the, you're the only one that can swing the axe. Swing the axe. To be, to be fair, he just woke up and realizes that his shorts need dry cleaned. Yeah. I, I assume it's the brown stains that are causing the disorder. Well, you know what? I would have had to move up to, to Manfang then to touch him. The lesser restoration is a hands-on spell. Well, then you will be in melee. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was right next to me. I really appreciate the fact you guys are building a wall in front of the knob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet it's still aiming for Felix. <laughs> what you going to do, Man Fang? Because it's coming for you. I'm going to hit it, I guess. You got enough dice? Yeah, I got enough dice. You want about six more of those die six to throw? That way you can just pick out the big ones. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got to give you credit so far. You guys have taken a rather nice chunk out of it. Okay, it's, is it? Is it? Yeah, actually. Is it good for 15? 15, how about that? 15 is what you need, so you good. hit it. Now I need this guy. Yeah. Of course, uh, you got about one third of its hit points gone, but if it hits you, I it's hurt a lot. <laughs> well, it's not so much the fang, it's the poison that's the problem. 
Well, Fang does 66 plus 3, and the poison does an additional 3d6. <laughs> so, any of you wishing to become catatonic today, wish granted. Should be 16 damage. 16 works. Nicely done, Man Fang. Yeah. Well, well done. Felix, uh, the creature targeted you last time. However, as Copius has pointed out, you're getting kind of a wall built there for you. Yeah. Is it still <laughs> looking at me or? I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, with, with Leaf and Man Fang moving right in front of it, it's going to go ahead and probably go after them. Okay. Okay. I don't know what else to do other than to keep shooting at it. One, one, one. No, <laughs> no, no. Can I do a sneak attack if it's no longer targeting me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely focused on Man Fang. Oh, got one of snake. 16. 16 hits. Hit it for 7 plus 5, 12 damage. You guys are just chopping the shit out of this thing. Well, yeah. Top of the order, Copius. Uh, do you want to do it, or you want me to go first? I'm gonna go first this time. Sure. Come on, Copius. Well, right. big number. Yeah, big number. No whammies. No <laughs> fumble. Yeah, we no whammies. No fumble this time, boys. Sorry. <laughs> Twenty-three. I think that hit. Twenty-three hits. Thank God. Let's, let's do some damage this time. At least as much as I rolled against uh, Felix. That that will do the trick right there. Uh, Thirteen points. Yikes almighty. Uh, holy crap. Uh, my turn. Let's see what I'm going to do. Oh, crap. I didn't want to do that. Three. Uh, copious. Inside your skull. Uh, <laughs> you hear... Leave now or be cursed for eternity, small. Yeah, I'm, good. I'm all gone, guys. See you later. Take care. W would you like to uh, do a wisdom save for me, please? Wow, what weather? I'll leave. <laughs> a one. A one. <laughs> Opious. What's your name? I didn't know. Wild E. Coyote. <laughs> Super genius. Uh, Leaf and Manfang, you do not realize this because Copius oh. is behind you. Felix does this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leaf, Manfang, you're up. <coughs> Leaf, go first. All right, uh, I'll use f flame blade. What the hell? Suddenly, seeing my life flash before my eyes or behind my ass, I'm not sure which. Well, don't worry, you're only gonna have one Paul bearer. <laughs> 22. That hits. Four, nine, and three, 12. Chopping it Not down. fast enough. Uh, Man Fang, you're up. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. Cool, cool, cool. Big damage. Big damage. Big damage. Ooh, that plus. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, twelve. Four, yes, twelve. 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 Uh, yikes. I am suddenly not looking that great. Uh, Felix, uh, the wavering bones, uh, signal. Maybe you can take this thing out. Or maybe you just shoot one of your friends. Uh, you do know that one of your associates has fled the area. Yeah. Uh, can, do I have the option to shoot the arrow and then run as well? Oh, or what the hell? Yeah. What's what's that? <laughs> I'm gonna write a song well, about both didn't of see you. what I saw. I just saw a, a copious shaped dust cloud kind of vaporized <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the hell out of here too. So I'm gonna just and poof, 
out the door as well. Sure. So I rolled 19. Was it worth the roll? Then yep. uh, it, was I still a sneak attack there? Yeah, because uh, it was focused on copious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 11 damage. Nicely done. Top of the order, Copious. Uh, give me an odd even. Odd means you run to the right. Even means you run to the left. <laughs> odd. You're running to the right, uh, which means away from your base of operations. <clears throat> Moments later, Felix will spot the shadowy figure of you headed towards the plaza because you are going to be running... Here, uh, maybe maybe I can draw something here. Uh, you are going to run this way and then this way. You know where all the were rats are at. So you know you got that going for you. Also, give me give me a D ten roll, please, Copious. Sure, be happy to. Two. Uh, huh. That is interesting. That is very interesting. Uh, you go out the door. Felix is in hot pursuit. Uh, and Felix, as you leave, you spot copious or run down the corner. Will you be following him or will you head back towards the base of operations? Uh, I don't want to follow him. <laughs> You're good. Where are you going? I'm going to yell that. Okay. So you are outside the door yelling, where are you going? I'm outside, just kind of standing there. I don't want to go follow him, but I don't want to be inside anymore. I know that much. Fair enough. Uh, Leaf. Manfang, you stand alone as the zing of Felix's arrow connects. The Naga collapses after 96 hit points of damage and clatters to the floor. Uh, dead. <laughs> what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? You, you turn around to give Felix the thumbs up and notice that that son of a bitch and Copious are gone. <laughs> 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 I'm like, look, man, what the hell happened to Copious and Felix? For wussies, I guess. Let's go see what this thing has. Yeah, what the hell? We're gonna we're gonna check the body. Yes, they lost. I hit the bones. <laughs> you go up to the bleached bones of the ancient guardian, and of course, uh, it doesn't have a scabbard with a plus five holy avenger yeah. on it. It actually has nothing. Uh, underneath the altar, you find the rest of the skeletal remains of what may or may not have been the high priest uh, because it's got this cool circlet with, uh, you know, a pharaoh looking snake head on it. Uh, it's worth a pretty penny. Uh, and then, of course, you have the wavy curtain wall behind I'm that. going to cast Detect Magic. Okay. Uh, Copious, you have now fled for two rounds. You find yourself in the open plaza staring at the poop encrusted statue uh, and the non poop covered statue in front of the <laughs> temple. You hear ooh, 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 uh, behind you, and suddenly your mind is cleansed of the fear that once overtook it. However, dark shadows seem to be moving along the cobblestone. And as you peer up, giant vultures sense a quick meal. What would you like uh, to do? So how, how far is it to some sort of shelter, overhanging shelter? Oh, you're right outside the temple, well, bud. You can, yeah, you could run over to the temple and hang out with the uh, guardian <laughs> statue. You will be right about here. Yes. Uh, so right there base is your uh, base of operations. Right there is the angry temple. Here is the library that you've already gutted, tavern, and armory. Over here is the fetid water of the restaurant. Uh, and I, I want to. If I glance back, do I see Felix? Nope. You've already turned the corner. All right. And 
Felix said, screw you. I'm not following you. Not going that far. Uh, you know, honestly, I'd, I'd probably go back to the tavern. Yeah, fair enough. There's, I would go hang with my nomies. So uh, I take it you're going to be in an expeditious retreat? I'm going to sprint. And if one of those shadows seems to be diving down at me, I'm going to cast uh, my, uh, blah, 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 what's it called? Misty Step and teleport if I have to. D12 against me. One. What? Who's calling for one? Eleven. Seven. <laughs> uh, you outdistance the birds of prey and manage to kick open the door, surprising your no-me colleagues. Uh, Felix, after watching Copius's ass round the corner, what would you like to do? Uh, I guess I will come back and look back in the door and pull an arrow and there are, peek in the door looking for the serpent. There are two shadowy figures moving around by the altar. Clearly, they are wraiths of your former colleagues. Yeah, I, I assume that I don't see the serpent anymore, so I'll relax the arrow and... Uh, hey, nice try, try Frank. I caught say, that. Is it, <laughs> what? It, you caught it late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just, just say... set me up. <laughs> is, is it dead? Uh, Manfang and Leaf, uh, you see a, a shadowy silhouetted figure of Felix the Bowman, uh, and you hear his deeply concerned voice of, is it dead? Yeah. Manhunt, man, man, Manfang, did you, did you hear some squeaky noise? I don't like know a chicken squawking? <laughs> Sound like a chicken squawking? Yeah. <laughs> the hell'd you go, Felix? I don't like snakes, man. Snakes and spiders. No <laughs> thing. You are, but I still killed it, you old chicken. You killed it? You yeah. killed it? You were paralyzed? I can smell your pants from here. Hey, I think everybody got a shot in. <laughs> yeah, everybody did. I'm not the one who ran away. <laughs> well, Felix, mostly where, because you're copious. <laughs> I'll tell you where he is. That son of a bitch shot me, so he was he was afraid I was coming for him, so he just took off, and I was. Yeah. So Felix, you say Copia shot you? I ah, he was trying to cast a spell or that, something. I don't that know. Be on, oh bullshit! He don't miss. That was on purpose. He's getting back at you for all the times you shot him. I, that's exactly what I think. And Damn he's right. just lucky I couldn't see him when I came outside. Oh, you wait. He'll write a song about that shit. You know what? I think that's a side effect of lycanthropy. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Mm. It Old might be the thing. evil spirits within causing him to do that. Where rats own it. So I, I cast detect magic. Do I see any blue glows in here? Uh, yes, behind the curtain wall. Oh, man, man, thanks. Let's go <laughs> look behind the curtain wall. Yeah, I'm going to look behind wall. the curtain. Something has to animate all those skeletons. It must be. Yeah. Got to be something nasty back there. I throw up the curtain. I throw open the curtain as fast as I can. Well, it's a stone curtain wall, exactly. so you have to go around it. We'll go around it. Okay, uh, Felix, uh, your two associates are going around the curtain wall in the back. Uh, would you like to enter the temple? I'll come back in, yeah, and I'll uh, walk up towards the altar. Okay, as you walk up towards the altar, you find the skeletal remains of the presumably high priest still wearing his golden circlet with no we took the circlet so you did take it okay yes so, we did uh you see the bleached skull of the, <laughs> the <laughs> high priest uh as you watch man fang and leaf go around the stone curtain uh you two notice that this appears to be personal chambers uh with scraggly curtains that were probably once quite pristine and rich uh but uh, now are crappy. You notice that the bed looks like a nest. Presumably, the high priest liked to sleep on his back, you know, because you've got the bowl shape there. Uh, and you notice two other things that are casting the blue, gl or blue glow. Leaf, you notice that there is a small iron chest underneath the bed, and you also notice there is some kind of an ankh, uh, a metal 
cross with a circle on the top uh, and it is also glowing blue it is on the nightstand next to a tome which, which is not glowing blue okay and, and man fang you, you wearing grab that, that chest i just want to make sure yep when the curse takes over your brain i want to know who to target yep yep I, i'll take the chest for the I'll, I'll, get it anybody out want to put the circlet it on no 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 not Man, nothing would be cool. It's all going in the bag. The aunt's yeah. going to go in the bag, too. I, I'm with Copious on this one. Nothing would be cooler than to see you guys wearing the Pharaoh hat. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Felix, you come around the corner just as these two are pilfering two more items. You look around and you notice religious sayings, but since you don't speak portal, you have no idea what it means. Oh. However, you do find a ceremonial shell black and gold uh respectively uh and it is the gold is real the shell is uh about a little bit smaller than man fangs because he's wearing a warrior shell but you know uh you can take a look at that this shell is not glowing blue uh, it is next to a cloak uh, and other religious paraphernalia, none of which is glowing blue. So Leaf and Manfang are focused on the magic items. Uh, this has a few items of, shall we say, monetary descriptors. Yeah, I'm going to try to take out my little dagger and see if I can pop some of that gold off that shell. Give me a performance check. That barmaid had him give her a couple of those, too. And just like the barmaid, we're all disappointed. <laughs> Nine. Uh, you are chipping away at it, but instead of coming off in a nice little mosaic, uh, it's coming off in sheets of ribbon. I don't have any use for the ribbon. Uh, is there a hat in that religious paraphernalia? There is. It is an all-white hat with blue trim. It is missing the golden circlet, though. Ah. <laughs> I think I... Is it large enough to fit on my head? Oh, yes. Tor oh, I'm totally going to put this hat on. Okay. <laughs> now you look <laughs> like false <of> Zoom. <laughs> God dang, man. Uh, as Leaf and Manfang garner their spoils, they turn around to see another high priestess of the serpent. <laughs> kill it, like, kill it, kill it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a joke uh, along the lines of, oh, look, they've elected the new pope, and it's me. <laughs> Something like that. Wow. Smoke, that smoke is gray. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the hat back off now that I've made the joke, though. We'll look around. Is there anything else in here? Uh, just, just personal items. Don't care. Yeah, too much about me. that. When Manfang picks up the chest, he can feel the weight shift. Uh, even though it was glowing blue, uh, it is certainly filled with some kind of coinage. Hmm. I think there's something in here, guys. Now, while, we, while we head back and see if we can find Copious, find out what the hell happened to him. He's we'll dead. <laughs> Don't mind Copious him. is dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. As far Felix, as you know, Felix, you Gonna killed him. I find him. He used those curved arrows on him. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think. I don't know, Felix. I think Copious probably would have shoved those babies right up your tail end. I agree. I think he was quite agitated the last time. I recall he was, and I so think that he just made up for it. I, I think we should head back. See if we. But which way did he go, Felix? Did you see him? No, nah, as soon as I got outside, I couldn't see him. All those big vultures, I think, got him. Yeah, oh well. Well, let's, uh, what do you want to do? We can press on or we can go back to the tavern and reconnoiter. Well, let's open up that chest, see what's inside. After we get back to the tavern? No, right now. Does it, is there anything else in this room? Is there a door or anything that we uh, can no. see? No back door. All right, well, yeah, I guess let's let's go back to the tavern. All right. Then let's go we'll, open that chest. We'll head back to tavern. Fair enough. You find the three gnomes drinking. Uh, copious. The before they got back, you noticed that uh, Pierre and Phineas had 
Pierre's chest open and were marveling at some jewelry that was contained within. It doesn't look like it would fit his personality, so to speak. They are shocked when they see you walk in and quickly slam the lid of the chest, not catching anybody's finger in it, <laughs> which I was really hoping to make Phineas Latrec <laughs> an invalid. Um, so they stammer and stutter and attempt to ascertain Anything but questions about what they were doing. I'm going to pretend like I didn't see it. So as they're trying to do, I'm going to play off the entire thing uh, until I have a chance to talk with my compatriots about what I found. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to play it off. And I'm going to ask <clears throat> uh, the gnomes if they knew anything about the curse over that temple, snake temple. Because I'm still convinced that I was being told I was going to be cursed. So um, I'll see if they have any any information in that regard. But otherwise, I'm going to start drinking heavily. Phineas uh, will go ahead and give a loud expounding of he has no idea what was in there. Uh, he and his uh, associates had never gotten the opportunity to check that. Uh, go ahead and give me an insight on his response. Uh, one. It seems believable. Uh, really believable. Really believable. <laughs> uh, Pierre points out that, hey, dude, once I saw the snake skin, I don't do that. I'm not into snakes. Uh, as for a curse, uh, I don't know. Uh, can you tell me what color I'm thinking? <laughs> Orange. Because it's uh, it's mid morning and they're already one sheet to the wind. <laughs> uh, you can roll an insight on his retort. Uh, that time was a little better. Sixteen. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you, you had to roll dice to figure that out. Did I want to make sure? But, but his response seems plausible. You sense a uh, definite fear of snakes. Uh, and from what you just went through, you can certainly understand that. Uh, they hand you some ale and ask you what kind of curse you're under. Because it ain't good looking. What's <laughs> going on up here that I just don't like? I think he just called you butt ugly. Yeah, I think he did too. I'm going to mix these guys up some some drinks and try to get them into my confidence, playing off the fact that I'm terrified of this curse that you know I was just threatened with. And I said I I wasn't cursed. They said if I didn't leave, I'd be cursed forever. And so, man, I I beat my feet out of there as fast as possible. And then just I'm going to pretend to slam back as many drinks as them, but not really. Changing the title of this scenario to copious roofies the gnomes <laughs> <laughs> it's coming <laughs> the door slams open and the three amigos charge in spotting copious drinking heavily what would you three like to say to your cowardly confidant what the hell copious i'm going to explain the curse to them leaf said leaf said you shot him in the ass and Took off running before he could catch you. I, I'm going to say, I don't know anything about that. I remember we started to attack the snake, and then something entered my brain, and everything's a blur after that until I came back to the tavern. I think you got a mind worm in there. Yeah. Sounds yes. me like you got really cursed. Is right. It's a mind worm. I think you got one of those mind parasites. I think I caught... Like I saw in a Star Trek movie? Yeah. Yes. On in here. He got spocked. <laughs> I'm going to play it off as though maybe I caught just a side of fact of whatever happened to Manfang and try to turn the tables on Manfang. Manfang, what happened to you? You stood there like a statue as that snake came out. Guys. And, and what's you the smell? yourself like 300 times while you're standing there. What happened? what happened? Well, we killed the Naga or killed the thing, whatever it was. The snake demon god or whatever. Man. Like he will be able to see the large jingly chest that yes. man finds. and look what we found wow did you open it no we haven't yet <clears throat> seemingly on cue both of the other gnomes are like hey 
What's in the uh, box? <laughs> let's take it over on the table there, man fag, and we'll see if we can get this thing open. I'll let you see what's in my this box. This is a good opportunity to show him what's in yours if he shows you what's in his. Yeah, I'll show you what's in mine. Show me what's in let, let's take a gander in your chest there, Pierre. Well, I mean, if, if you're going to let me have a look in that one, I'll certainly let you have a look in mine. All right. He throws yeah, open the lid, and Felix motions for you to take a look. Take a look. Uh, it's a lot of clothes. Uh, they're all well folded over, neatly packed. Uh, he has a small uh, briefcase-esque item, a leather satchel, if you will. Uh Oh, a pair of ladies underwear you got in there? What's with that? Souvenir from a night? Is this it's from, his, it's, is that it's from your mom. Is that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that glowing blue by any chance? The chest? Mm -hmm. uh, it is not. Okay. I feel, I feel like there's got to be something underneath this. That, that lasts 10 minutes, right? Uh, let me just see here. I've had this stupid Looney Tunes thing going through my head ever since this thing started. Christ, I can't even find it. That's the Simpsons. Exactly. It's stuck in my head, so... It has no company. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll shut up with my musical. Oh, there it is. God, I had it open. No wonder I couldn't see it. It says, No, duration for the duration. Since it's been smoked. Must bear is cast time. One action. Ten minutes. Uh, the satchel glows blue. Satchel glows blue. Uh, I'll say, Felix, check the satchel. What's in the satchel? Open up the satchel, reach in. There's a necklace. What's the, the necklace? Can, the can necklace. I see that the stuff is glowing or can only Leaf see it? Only Leaf. Uh, leaf, the necklace is not glowing. Necklace is not glowing. What the satchel that? is glowing. What's well, really in the satchel? Turn it inside out. Let us see it. There's some magic. Something still in he, he tips it upside down. <clears throat> drops out. Reach uh, in the satchel, Felix. Yeah, go right ahead there. Well, this is getting really personal all of a sudden. I think. Oh it's yeah, yeah. Upside down. I'm, I'm just there. gonna kind. I'm gonna whisper to Copious. Uh, the the satchel's glowing blue. It's it's magic. Why don't you stick your hand in there? Because you're the only one that can see what's. So glowing. let's go ahead and see what's in your trunk. All right, right Ben, we'll Fang, open it up. Let's see it. Come on, Leaf. Oh, Reach yeah. into that damn yeah. satchel and pull it out. Manfang, are you opening it up? Yeah, I'm opening up my chest. <clears throat> Opens it up. Away. The two gnomes look in. That is a lot of coins. Ooh, look, a necklace just like mine. Oh, no, no, no. We're not letting the gnomes close enough to touch that necklace. No, they're not touching it. Well, that's kind of rude of you. Yes, it is, isn't it? I'll trade you my necklace for that necklace. Don't think so. <laughs> no. Is that necklace glowing blue by any chance? It sure is. Ooh, we're not trading that. Put it on, Leaf. Put it on. Leaf, oh. uh, it has been 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. Mm -hmm. But still, no something in that chest is magic. Yes. At least one item in there is At magic. least one item in that chest is magic. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. How much gold? A lot. About 750 gold. Ooh. All in total currency, old currency. There are some rings. I won't put rings on. I like <laughs> rings. Then we need to. I, we don't want Man Thing to have to carry all this. Let's just split it up. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. That was so like you said 750 total gold? Yep. Yep. And there are six rings. Oh. Some have jewels, some are unadorned. I like all. I'll just take rings. You guys can have all the coins. I'll take the necklace, and you guys can split the rings. Hmm. 
I'll take the coins. I'll take you guys' coins. You can have all the rings and the necklaces. Now we're going to split the coins. Yeah, I'll, no, that's fine. I'll take your share of the coins. Now, here's a question for you guys. It seems that we don't know this, you know, off the game record here, when he's going to be back uh, as far as Frank Jr. is concerned. We split out his share of this also. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't and Hoggis. And Hoggis. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. assume that they're absolutely. still with yeah, us. They didn't do it in the party. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be times when they'll be able to get back into it. I, I like how Man Fang's like, what do I get? What do I get? And you guys are like, okay, we'll just divide this. <laughs> well, so Man Fang, you get to carry the chest. You get to carry it. <laughs> so everybody gets 125 of the of the uh, total currency. Piece. Yeah, the total. I I am a gnome, so carrying 125 gold coins doesn't sound like something that's real exciting to me. That's why again, you can I, store yours wherever you want to, dude. Mine's staying on my person. I just want the rings. There's six of them. I'm whatever fits I'll wear, and what doesn't fit I'll put on my cravat and tie around my neck. Mm -hmm. uh, rings one and six have stones. One is a blue stone. One is a red stone. The other four are unadorned. Uh, number four has some kind of etching inside the band. <laughs> one ring to rule them all, bitch. Put that thing on. <laughs> No problem. Gopius doesn't read popular literature. He's not going to know. On, put it on. Are you going to put it on? I said I'm wearing all the rings that I can. <laughs> okay. Well, you got more than six fingers. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm putting a necklace on. Uh, Copius, give me a percentage, please. Is this to see how much what the poison account is? Yeah, pretty much. It, it tells me how many rounds you have before you die. Eight. Just zero eight. Zero eight. I rolled an eight. <clears throat> how the hell you do that? Of course, you roll ones all the time. I was going to say that you're only 5% chance to roll a one on a 20 sided die. I'm pretty sure I beat that odds on a regular basis. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the good news is it uh, tells you. This is a ring of persuasion. Persuading. Everybody. The etch ring is. Yep. Uh, the, Felix. The rings with the stones are each worth 100 gold the pieces, gold and the other three unadorned rings are each worth person. 25. So you got 275 and the Ring of Persuasion. And you are certain, absolutely without a doubt, it is a Ring of Persuasion. Or I'm totally being lied to by a Ring of Deception, one or the other. I've got that, that gold circlet also. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put it on? Priest? No, actually, I don't want to put it on. Does it but fit? I'm going to show it to the rest of the party. I'm not going to hold oh, it on. I'll put it on. Ruby gemstone eyes make it worth 200 gold pieces. Okay. I'm just glad to have survived the curse that I was under, you know, inside that. You'd temple. think that. <laughs> yeah, Copius is mine. That's exactly where he's at. Felix, uh, what are you doing right now? Um, I guess I'm just divvying up all the currency and taking my share and hiding it away, squirreling it away. Uh, yeah. Man Fang D20, Felix D20. 11. Three. Uh, Felix, as you're divvying out the coins, you find a slim rod. About well, this is this is about twenty four inches long, uh, but the rod is <laughs> about eight inches long and I'm, mithril. I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> what is twenty four? Yeah, twenty four. Wow. It's about what an is, eight inch mithril tube. It's wait, hollow. Wait. Do you want to borrow the ring of persuasion for this? <laughs> you, Copius, never want to take that ring off. 
ever. <laughs> the guy with the ego gets well, the cursed ring. The man the thing, you want to try on the circlet? Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> it might Did not anyone be else see idea. me get this give wrong? It, give, it, give it. Come on. Give it to me right now. I'm going to put it on. I think it looks cool. It's All like right. a wind chime. Hmm. Ooh, okay. Uh, man Fang, are you putting it on? Yeah, I'm putting it on. Uh, you need to strike a regal pose once you put that on. <laughs> there, That's yeah. a Take a cask and put your foot on it. Um, it's it's doing something. All right. But it's gonna have you're gonna have to get a tune to it. So tomorrow, if you continue to wear it. Maybe it does something. All right, I'll continue to Ooh, work. You might get a. You might get to ride the dragon. I might get to ride the dragon. Yeah. There's no drug abuse here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Felix, Actually, yes. there's been a lot of drug abuse in this. <laughs> so Felix, yes, no one has noticed uh, the mithril tube. All right, it's really important tube. I, it must be important if it was in this chest. So I'm going to kind of pocket it and make sure no one else sees me and inspect it on a little bit more with a little bit more detail. Do I notice anything, any writing on it and anything? Uh, first, give me a stealth to hide it successfully. One, one, one. I want to hear it at the floor. 18. Ah. Uh, the gnomes <laughs> are entranced with everything going on. Uh, but neither one of them react uh, as you cautiously and serendipitously take a look at it. You notice that it has a hole directly through one end that goes through as if held by a slender thread. This is a wind chime. <laughs> Part of a wind chime. Yeah. You can always sound it and see if it does anything. Tuning, tuning fork it. That's what I was about to do. Just aim it at the gnomes. Not copious. Well, I've seen wind chimes before, so I'm just going to hold it in my hand like this and just go and flick it. Give me a performance check to see if uh, you roll too low, you've got too good a grip on the mithril tube and it won't sound correctly. Uh, 14. Doesn't sound correctly. However, both gnomes. <laughs> what you got? What do I got? Yeah. Oh, I got all these coins. And what about that tube thingy? Oh, this tube thingy? Flick it again. Performance? Well, it's just a tube. Boy, you are a horrible bard. <laughs> I'm not a bard, so yes, I would agree with that. It's pretty it's though. Pretty. Is it like is it like a one of those blow oh, things maybe. where it shoots darts? I'm gonna blow through it. Nothing. Nothing. Go the other side. I blow on the end of it like I'm blowing into a bottle. Does it make noise? Oh, stop that, Felix. It does make a small noise. Somewhere in the distance, a dog barks. <laughs> or a whole pack of were rats. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, silent I think it's pretty cool. I'm just going to hang on to it. Man, yeah. That's hard to say. At very least, I can club somebody with it. You're the part you know, I'll trade you my necklace for that thing. That's okay. He's steadily trying to get rid of that damn necklace. Uh, it's yeah. a nice necklace, too. He's the Pied Piper. Uh, Man Fang, you're still feeling something. You gotta keep it on. I'm not gonna take this off. Uh, Did Robert is... see this interaction at all? Is he still here with us? Yeah, he and uh, Haggis are still here. Uh, Robert, no. Haggis, definitely not. Damn, he's a bard. I was hoping he could help me out with this. You can thing. always ask him if you want. I think I if I will. Yeah, and I'll say, hey, this looks like a wind chime. Can you do anything with it? No. Can you show me how to play it? He examines it. With an 18, he tells you 
yeah, what you need to do is you need to string some thread through here and dangle it and then sound it. Yeah, turn that down, man. Okay. Let's give that a try. Is that, uh, is that what you do? Yeah, I pull a thread out. At advantage, roll performance. Both nines. <laughs> you stink. Uh, oh. He's got a natural 20. He said, would you like me to show you how this is done? I think I would, yes. I he rearranges the thread, dangles it a little bit. Everybody make a constitution save. Oh, God. What is this tube? Tube of power. 19. Nope. Six. 18. You know what? That's the brown note. That's what's coming right there. <laughs> oh, so oh, I hope this coming. is the brown. If this thing is the brown note. Oh. Leaf, uh, what was your constitution save? I didn't hear you guys. I had to fix my, my thing. What I need a constitution say? Yes. Uh, Robert of Zeppelin has sounded the mithril tube. 22. 22? Yeah. Uh, Man Fang, you have to re-roll yours. You're rolling at disadvantage, and I can't tell you why. Because you already shat yourself. That's why. <laughs> There's nothing in your intestine to come out. 16. 16 still good. The gnomes. Huh? Both die. Nope. <laughs> One of them's good. And Haggis. Oh, that's bad. Uh, Haggis, copious blood oozes out of your ears as a deafening bell rumbles through your head and you are in a fetal position on the ground while the rest of your colleagues are looking at you seemingly uh, unscathed by whatever the hell this thing is. Was. So what happened? Robert blew in the pipe or something? No, he sounded it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take liberties here. Now that Robert has seen Copious suffer in su or substantially from it, Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> he rings that thing like a doorbell at Halloween. <laughs> That's how you play his character. As you and Hoggis writhe in pain, uh, he laughs and then grasps the tube, silently, silencing the vibrations, and the blood comes to a halt, and you slowly regain your bearings. <laughs> And you know what? Like, so I, I gotta ask. Well, let's this, see so if I he rings it again. Yet. Why did you give exactly it Exactly what he would do. As soon as we had a reprieve. Yeah. Uh, Robert's supposed to be showing me how to play it. <laughs> That's how you play it. Um, apparently, I don't know how to play it. It, it is a tube it. of disruption. Uh, you need to make a DC 16 or be incapacitated on your turn. Oh. DC 16 versus Constitution. Uh, very useful, but everybody has to make the save. <laughs> I assume that includes the person ringing it, too. It does not. Oh. 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 This thing is great. It, it, it has the potential to be very good or very bad. <laughs> doomsday. Well, very, very good. It's well, here's my next question. Advice. Knowing that it Knowing that it affects copious the way it does, is Robert going to willingly give that up? I think he's going to put a leash on it and let his zonky drag it along the cobblestones for the rest of his life. <laughs> you know what's funny about this, Jason? He thinks just like you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does. Because I, I know Frank would do that. <laughs> Bing, bing, Hello. bing. He's like Ringo Starr with that thing. Jason's still <laughs> suffering the effects. Look at Copious. He hasn't moved a muscle. <laughs> He's, He's frozen. 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 <laughs> How about that? Is that thing called, Frank? The tube of something? A disruption. 
disruption. This eruption. So you guys are getting a lot of, we'll call them magic items. <laughs> Ooh, okay, cool. So we're getting a lot of things that get us in trouble is what we're getting. You know, magic is neither good nor evil. It is the application of uh, said power that defines it. Uh, wait till you find out what the headset does. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the gnomes are willing to trade... Uh, Two necklaces for that item, Felix. No, I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to practice with it until I can get it right. You know, I wonder if you'd be interested in a little side bet. Ooh, it's been a while out here in the jungle. Can we hear this going on? Oh, yeah. Every, everybody... Uh, Everybody can hear it and see it. Felix. For Copious, who's no. I know you're urgent to tell you. Yes, Plus, we haven't heard what the side bet is. Uh -huh. it's, it's not going to be in your favor, I guarantee you. Really? Oh, I think you'd be surprised. <laughs> Hold on. Got to find my notes. Remember, he does have dice. Yeah, I have the oh, dice. Well, and sure I he does. And what do these two gnomes? I, I never trust the gnome. It no seems to me no. I also no have offense, the tablet of gambling. <laughs> trust the gnome. Gnomes are the most trustworthy creatures in this world. Oh, shit. All offense. Let All me offense. tell you about the virtues of a gnome. I'm standing on the bar now to sing okay. these praises. Oh, oh, by the way, none of you is persuaded by his uh, eulogy <laughs> of the gnomish culture. As a matter of fact... Just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> that was the case. You will be suffering uh, uh, disadvantage on all persuasion rolls while you wear that thing. You will need a removed curtain <laughs> to take that thing off. I'm, not thinking oh, that. I'm God, wearing all the rings. <laughs> really? <laughs> I told you would. Oh, Doesn't dissuade him at all. Come on there, big guy. What are the... What are, yeah, what do you want to do? If you win, you can have both necklaces. If I win, I get your mithril tube. And what's those necklaces worth? The one is worth a lot. I mean, ju just on a cursory value, it's probably upwards of a grand. It, it's just gem encrusted. He hasn't and, told you where he got it. <laughs> and and let's not some reason to be clear here, Felix. Oh, let's do it. Value. So, if you win it. So, as I recall, I'm not saying this out loud. I'm thinking this. I, I know I got my loaded dice, and I got the tablet of gambling last time from Robert. So, I think that if we do like a 4d6 highest roll, I think I got this. Yeah. Wait, I just want to make sure. So right now, is the gnome's chest still open? Yeah. Is the satchel still out there? Yeah. Shit, I'll well, stick my hand in a damn thing. No, no, no. And are both gnomes watching the this interaction with Felix? They're they're with Felix. Uh, oh well, hell, I'm using stealth over time. I'm gonna slide yeah. my way over and take that damn satchel. I'll take the satchel. All three oh of you are going after the satchel. <laughs> no, 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 I'm all right. I'm all right. I'll, I'll see what, if I see what Copious is doing, I'm just going to kind of stand in a way and block the view of anybody if they should happen to look that way. Well, Manfang's going after it too. So, Manfang and Copious, uh, <laughs> oh, we'll dude. checks, please. And if it's and a one, somebody's getting stealthy. their fingers caught. <laughs> oh, God. So, what are we rolling here? Stealth check. Oh, my God. Twelve. <laughs> um, I got fourteen. Man, Fang beats you to it and grabs it. Yeah, on a stealth check. Yeah. <laughs> Corbin and Ox beat me to it. The good news is that Mr. Diplomacy beat you to it. Uh, the good news is that uh, the two gnomes, greed filling their eyes, as is often the case with gnomes, uh, are laser focused on Felix at this time. I think let's do it. <clears throat> okay. To be fair, 
Uh oh. Okay. That's right. 4d6, right? Uh, I think I got the two loaded dice in my hand. So last time I rolled 66 and took the highest four. Correct. And then I'm I get to add one d4 for my tablet of gambling. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. You can use it once a day. Let's do it. Go ahead. All right. What's your answer? I'm double counting. <laughs> 10, 16, 20. Oh. Not oh, yeah. even remotely close. 16. <sighs> now the proud owner of a cursed necklace. Pierre throws him across the room. <laughs> Loaded my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, laughed and laughed. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> well, let me go get the other necklace out. What are you two doing in my chest? <laughs> I'm not in his chest. I got knocked over by a man fang as he's walking into the what chest. Are you, what are you doing in my chest, dude? I was just looking because you said we could check. Was... You look with your eyes, not with your hands. <laughs> I, have, I have eyes on my hands. You didn't know that? Dragonic pe- dragonborn people have eyes on their hands. They have. I did, I did not know that, King Tut. <laughs> <laughs> you got caught. You did got you, caught. Uh, did, are you holding the satchel or did you just reach in? Holding the satchel, looking at it for now. Fair enough. Uh, he rips it out of your hands. Felix, he flicks the expensive 1,000 gold piece necklace to you. Easy. Oh, that's Re- reaches easy in, that. pulls out a paper, lays it down. Pulls out a pen, lays it down, pulls out a necklace, which is smaller, made for a woman, um, and it's worth probably 500 gold pieces. Uh, it has got a, uh, uh, what's the what's the head, the picture of the silhouette head? Cameo? Cameo. It's got a cameo of a tortle on it. I, is it to me? I don't know what we're doing here. Yeah, that, yeah sure. one necklace it. is 1,000. The other necklace with a cameo is 500. That's the other necklace you won. Which one did I win? Both. Oh, 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 perfect. Oh, no, you only won one. The other one is for the rest of us. <laughs> I thought that they, uh, I thought that I only won the 1,000 or 1,000 gold piece. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Two yeah. necklaces. I want the 1,000 gold piece necklace. Uh, that was the first one they tossed to you. Perfect. There we go. So you got fifteen hundred dollars or fifteen hundred gold pieces and two necklaces. Now, you did notice that he said these aren't loaded dice and flung them across the room. <laughs> yes, I did. What do you mean loaded dice? You're playing? Um, are you playing me? Well, of course not. I lost. Uh, yeah, with loaded dice, you were trying to cheat. Uh, I lost. So uh, if those are loaded yeah. dice, those are really poorly loaded. You know what? Let me go over and get them, and I'll re-roll. Absolutely not. You lost. But yet I'm the bad guy. Yeah, because you cheat. You were attempting to cheat. Yeah, I wonder why he rolled so badly if he had loaded dice. I wonder that as well. Yeah, which necklace was it that did it to him? Mm-hmm. Which one was cursed? Hey, mm-hmm. Felix, the one with the cameo on it? Yeah. Just keep in mind that these cat creatures get really bent out of shape when they realize we have stuff that came from this area. Can we break that cameo off and you just keep the gem encrusted part of that necklace and leave the cameo piece here? I'm not wearing any of these necklaces. I'm not really a jewelry Hope type well. person. <laughs> I'm not really a jewelry type person. So, now remember... These are necklaces formerly owned by Pierre. This is not the necklace found in the trunk. Your trunk. I, the iron that chest. one that was in our trunk, I've got. Hmm. Correct. Uh, just, just making the distinction, there are three necklaces yeah, and, in play. And I just won two of them in the gambling role. 
Yes. That is correct. What about Good. the Jawas War? You would have shit if I would have rolled four sixes while you were watching. <laughs> yes, I would have. I really expected him to. We don't uh, know what kind of dice he's got over there in Indiana. Those weird Indiana. The best. <laughs> the the, the pi pirate dog dice. Yeah, there you go, baby. Let's I roll see. a lot of sixes in the How about if I re roll these? Uh, three ones and a two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Loaded poorly for mm -hmm. the DM. Uh, so there you have it, gentlemen. Uh, Man Fang, he rips his satchel out of your hands and says, I don't want you poking around in this stuff. All right. Cool. Fang. Time to get that finger out of your face, Man Fang. You'll break it off next time he comes into your snack. I'm not touching you. <laughs> I'm not touching By you. Way, that's cool. I'm telling you that because I'm near you. <laughs> Either, huh? I'm not touching you. Either. This is not, not touching. touching either. <laughs> I, I should just pop myself in the nose with the camera. Oh, it's on now. So there you go. Uh, he slams the lid to the trunk. He fastens a padlock to it and puts the key back around his neck. It'd be easy to get that key once his head's off. You guys touching my stuff. Or I'll kill you, oh, Frank. Oh, oh, oh. Stripes. <laughs> oh, you're touching you, I'm not touching you, no, Francis. Lighten up, Francis. So okay. it is now mid morning. You guys have plundered another section yes. of the town, uh, and Felix has shown his true colors using his, uh, shall we say, borrowed abilities. Uh, the total distinction came in handy for you, as did your yeah. guys. So, uh, the gnomes are like, what are we going to eat? Why don't you go eat those loaded dice? Great. Go eat that snake. Hmm? We still have that snake, Pete? It was a bone snake. So. That's right. <laughs> I know what it was. <laughs> I mean, can we, we could have probably eat the bones if we got nutrition, right? We'll ground them up and throw them in the soup. But you're dragonborn. <laughs> Nobody else wants the morrow. <laughs> so, um, it's up to you guys. Uh, okay. This, what what else have we got block. to explore over here? Let's go hit the temple, guys. We There's got time. Two buildings yeah. besides the the we have the skeletons yeah. and the thing that comes out at night building, right? And we did the skeleton. Yeah, we did skeletons. Did the skeleton, and there, there were no skeletons, just one. Uh, skeleton. Just one, one skeleton. skeleton. But the building next to it, there was something yeah. that comes out at night, right? Well, let's go do the thing that comes out at night oh. then. Yeah, it's daytime. We'll be fine. Yeah, what the hell? Or we can go over to the shrine. All right, which one you want to do? Shrine? Check out the thing, the daytime thing, or the nighttime thing. Yeah, before it's night. We'll yeah, get before it's... nighttime. Yeah. That sounds like winter. Okay, night. let's go to the one that uh, come, only comes out at night. This one? Yeah. Okay. The I'm old stoked. inn, correct? The old inn. The old, old inn. inn. Uh, do you want to go back door or do you want to go? Well, we know what Alex wants to do. No, I want to go through the back door. Oh, back door man. All right. You know, I want to put door. on one of these necklaces. Which one? The lady's brooch necklace with the cameo. No. The one with the clearly cursed cameo or the one seemingly innocuous but very wealthy one that traps the souls of its wearers i mean the pretty necklace <laughs> i'll probably put on that uh soul trapping one the pretty one the one that pierre was trying to get rid of so badly that one yeah it's really heavy those okay stones, i'm not gonna those stones are nice but it's heavy heavy because of all the souls it has in it Heavy because of all the stones it has. There's a reason it's worth a thousand. It's uh, it's eh, nice. maybe I won't put it on then. That's me. I'm storing my gold on my donkey. I'm not in my <laughs> saddlebags. I'm not carrying this crap around. With yeah. Wow. Felix uh, Pierre will offer to go ahead and uh, keep it safe for you. If you I like. bet he would. Wow. No thanks. Absolutely not. You could put uh, in that uh, chest that uh, Manfang's carrying. No. No. Money is he going to carry uh, that thing no, around? No, 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 no. We split the gold up. Everybody should have, except for Copius, who took all the rings. Everybody else should have 150 gold turtle. 
coins. Portal coins. Portal coins. 100, 125. And so. Copious has 150 because uh, Copious gave his up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is the important one. <laughs> I thought it was the one next to it. I, I it, it makes him very persuasive. Oh, like persuasive. All right. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. go check out this other place. All right, let's go. By noon, sleeping. that thing will be sleeping. Sure. Uh, are you going out the back door? Back door again. Back door. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to have to keep. No, you're not getting a share. Just open the damn door. It's going to be shut again right after you leave. Fine. Fine. Uh, he and Phineas Latrec go ahead and move the boxes yet again, complaining the entire time, a la Weave from uh so uh but they managed to get the door open uh they peek out after you guys all right we'll head over to the end who's first one out i am and perception <laughs> that's what we put the gumshoe up front yeah mr diplomacy mr diplomacy uh, perceptions plus three diplomacy you notice a very large toucan sitting on the building across the way uh giving a nice robust chirping noise that's a fruit uh, loops bird frank yeah don't eat those fruit loops they all taste the same so uh it however seemingly has no care in the world uh so you gather that the dragon and or vultures are probably not around. So it looks like the way to the inn is clear. Let's do it. Follow uh, behind Manfang. Everybody goes to Manfang. You come to yeah. the crossroads. You come to this area of the crossroads headed for the inn. And you go ahead. Who wants to go in first in the dark and damaged inn? I can see in the dark. I guess I can sneak my head in there and take a look around. I was going to say, I, can, I see in the dark. And well, I you can, can sneak, out. can't you? Yeah, I'll let Copious do it. I can sneak. I can yeah, sneak. you can sneak. Well. No, uh, eat, eat your hamburger and hush. Copious, uh, you see a lot of destruction inside the inn, and it seems to have created three distinct paths uh vines have come in through the ceiling and in through the windows and a lush uh cover canopy if you will of forestation is now growing inside is now growing inside the walls uh so your dark vision is going to be a little bit on the fritz here as the thick vines give off their own mild heat source, uh, your dark vision will also pick up small rodents milling about that stir at your presence as you meander into the darkened inn. The sign is long gone. You will never know that it is the Mizumi Inn. I'll go back out and report, but I'm going to start my report with get some torches because we're burning this the rest of the way to the ground. <clears throat> Okay. It's full. I guess Robert must be with us. Yeah, we can have Robert do that. So now keep in mind the foliage is green, so it's not going to ignite like tinder, so it might take a while. I was hoping somebody had some oil pots, to be honest with you. Uh actually Well, there's plenty of oil in a temple next door. I was thinking about it, but you know, I'm a little gun shy about going through those doors again. Yeah, I was I'll go back over. Huh? No problem. Let's get something and gather yeah. something up to put a will in. I'll help uh, you out with that. So Leaf and Felix are going back down to the temple down the block. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the toucan is now missing. Uh, instead, there are a couple of parrots. Hmm. One sitting on the tavern roof, your base of operations, and one across. And they are chittering back and forth. Parrots. Perception check, Leaf and Felix. What language are they speaking in? Avian. 17. Eight. They're just chirping away, according to Felix, but Leaf, 
you swear to God, you just heard Death March. Death March? <laughs> but you look around. I look at Felix. Does Felix I swear one of the birds just said Death March? No, it's just a bird. Birds say things all the time. Chirp, Why chirp, chirp. Hey, uh, Paul, they want a cracker? <laughs> chirp, 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 chirp. Mm -hmm. the hell with it. I'm going to go on in there and find something to put oil in. You know what? Uh, you, you can find an old bucket, uh, probably yeah. piss bucket, but you can find one. Uh, you can crack open uh, the little avenue, the reservoir, and uh, bleed out some of the oil. Okay. Might want to we'll put do. it out first. <laughs> Put some water on it. Maybe we should uh, just let put it... water on the oil. That will help. Oil we fire. just just let it burn, and we'll just take over burning oil and throw it on the fire. On the you carry it. <laughs> well, I, I was kind of hoping you would. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, smother it. Huh? Get some in a bucket and just cover it up to take the oxygen off of it. No water. Give me a D twenty. Uh, 17. Uh, it's minus 3 times 5, 30. You get about 70% of the bucket filled up with uh, non-ignited oil. Hmm. Sounds good. That's I like really good. these copious cocktails. We'll put a rag down inside of it and throw it in there. All right. We'll take it back to copious. Here you go. Uh, you pass by the two birds again. Trip, 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 trip. Death march. <laughs> Uh, you, know. <laughs> you, you look back up at it and it just stares blankly at you. you Felix, are, shoot them damn birds. <laughs> They're just birds. I'm not going to shoot the birds. Chirp. They're so pretty. <laughs> chirp, chirp. Yeah, they, they keep saying death. I'm not sure I can hit the birds. Uh, the door opens to the, your base of operations and Frank or Robert of Zeppelin leans out. Hey, what the hell are you two doing? Keep moving. What are you on? A death march? <laughs> what the hell? What's what? going on here? Slams the door. You hear him reshuffle all the boxes. Hmm. He's babysitting two idiot gnomes. So, you know, it's like copious if he was twins. Oh, that was a cold <laughs> shot there, copious, in case you were I, wondering. Yeah, I, I figured that's what Frank would say. So, <laughs> that's exactly what he would say. That's exactly what my character would do. <laughs> we'll take the oil back to copious. Here you are. All right, sounds good. Uh, hey, Felix, you're the only one that can't see in the dark. Do you want to light a torch? I thought we were going to light this bucket of oil. Well, we're, we're going to light a torch, and we're going to spray this bucket of oil all over the floor. All right, yeah, yeah, I'll light a torch. Is the floor in this place wood? Uh, no, it is not. It's stone. Is there a bar in this inn? Uh, there is a bar covered in foliage. There is, is also a stone? second story. That part is wood. Okay. Why don't we take this up to second story and set the fire up there where it's wood and be drier? Hey, let's just remember what happened in the library. The the damn plants about ended us. I'm not taking That's true. any chances. All right, then You're pour right. it on the First, bar. Then the bars have to. The bars wood, oh, right? Pour it. Uh, the bar is covered in foliage, so you aren't sure if it is wood or not. Man, we got to walk over out. and clear it off if you want. I'll do that. Okay. I can't see anything in there, so I'm not going in. Uh, man see, Fang. Torch, Felix. All right, I'll light a torch. Man Fang, you wander over, you start clearing the brush off. Sure enough, uh, it is a deep mahogany or teak wood. I'll go with teak wood uh, bar. Uh, very expensive looking, a little on the warpy side, but uh, certainly wood, certainly flammable. Felix, uh, you've ignited your torch successfully. I assume you're standing right next to Copious so the embers can ignite the bucket, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so Copious, uh, Manfang has gone in. Uh, he's clearing off the bar. says, yeah, it's wood. You have the bucket of oil. Felix, uh, you have the torch. What do you guys want to do? Light this sucker on fire. Operation, right? Yeah, let's do it. Do it. So are, that oil out. Are, are you going to pour it or are you going to give it a fling, Copious? Pour one one in, it'll run down. Uh, Copious starts to pour it. Everybody roll initiative. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. A natural one. Dang. I got a natural six. And a natural one as well. We both bump. Crap. 
And Copious? 14. Copious, uh, you catch the glint of movement of a reptilian or lizard-like creature whisking around the bar towards you. First off, DC 12 to hang on to your bucket as it scares you a little bit. And then you may do what you want. 19 on the DC 12 check. You managed to hang on to the bucket intact. Or on the animal. Now, is the lizard is charging me? Yes, it's coming from around behind the bar, charging you. It's about six feet long. Uh, it looks like a crocodile, but that's not what it is. Flash the oil. Throw the bucket at it and run my the opposite direction from where I just. Oh, here we go again. Dexterity as your modifier. <laughs> hit it. Uh, I doubt I hit it because I got a seven. So. You splash the bar with oil, turn tail, and run just as it's gnashing jaws slam down. That leads us to the 10. Uh, Felix. Uh, I'm going to throw the torch at the bar. That's and run after oil. Copious. And I'm going to run back. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be up here. I don't want these alligators. Dexterity to hit it. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, 19. You hit the bar and it ignites, uh, sending black smoke rolling up into the air. You turn tail and run. Copious, Felix, D20, as long as it's not a one, you can thrash through the string. Not a one. Not a one. Okay. You guys plow through. Man Fang looks around like, hey, what's going on? And that brings us to Leaf the Druid. Me? Mm-hmm. You well, they're the running. They just set fire to it. I'm going to yell at Man Fang, let's go and head out the door. Man Fang, you and I tied. <laughs> yeah. We both do you, do you want to oh, try and do something or do you want to let me bite you first? No, uh, go ahead. Bite. Jerk. <laughs> I don't think I did. Eight plus five is 13. Well, then mm -hmm. My AC is 18, I'm pretty sure. Uh, your buttocks are not in any danger of my gnashing teeth. Uh, what would you like to do? I'm going to hit you. Fair enough. 15 to hit me. I hit something else. I got a Uno. <laughs> you have Damn. thrown your weapon at the creature. <laughs> you are now weaponless. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll let you hit yourself. Either one. I'd rather throw my weapon. I'd rather do that. Okay. In a fit of fear and disgust, he wings his weapon at the creature that is not yet on fire and now is just standing there like this. Uh, that brings us to the top of the order with the 14 copious. Uh, so after that last battle, where is everyone positioned just for the scene? You three are at the doorway. Man Fang is up at the bar. Weaponless, facing off with a basilisk. I'm going to punch it. Oh, Jesus. That was my fear when I heard that, yeah. <laughs> uh, well done, Mr. Potter. <laughs> so the, 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 oh, and the fire has started. Well, I was going to say, the, the basilisk is backlit by the fire at this point. Oh, both of them are. Both of them are. Looks like a scene from Star Wars 3. <laughs> Don't look at its eyes, Frankie. <laughs> no, uh, right. And I don't, I don't remember my any lores associated with these. So I guess I'm going to try to cast a spell. So let's just do that. Uh, twenty six. So I'm thinking that hit. Oh yeah. Ten points. <clears throat> Nicely done. Uh, bringing up the ten, Felix. Part of me wants to try out these uh, the lips of mockery and try to tell Manfang, run. Run out of there. Uh, isn't that vicious mockery against Manfang? Yeah. It, it would be, but I. last time you said that I can speak through the lips, but I don't know, is it only with vicious mockery or can I throw my voice with the lips? You can throw your voice with the li lips. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell Manfang to run because that building is on fire. Oh, Man Fang, a crescendo of voices, at least two, are run, run, Man Fang, run, Man, Man Fang, run, run, run. Yeah, you back. No, I'm going to punch it. I'm going to kill this thing. All I can see is Tim Allen in Galaxy Quest. 
Oh. I'm doing great against this thing. Uh, Leaf the Druid. Uh, Felix apparently has a puppet in his hand. Menfig, run! Menfig, run! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ventriloquist dummy. Oh, man. I love that. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> what do you want to do, Lee? You're up. Hey, 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 hey. Well, the only thing I've got is long range, other than the spells, is, uh, which I can't throw in here, is javelin. Poison spray. You, you can do javelin. I'm going to have to. And watch me roll You're back. Watch me roll one. Gee, that would be depressing <laughs> for me. Oh, I didn't roll one. I rolled a four. <laughs> uh, Manfang, you and the basilisk are squaring off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Javelin goes whizzing in between you. Do you want to go first or do you want me no, to? I want to go first this time. Go ahead. That is plus I hit you with 11. No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, Let me think. Yes, you did not hit me. Uh, the Basilisk will attempt to bite you. Uh, 12 plus 5 is 17. Does that get you? Oh, that's right. You're 18 now. Uh, it snaps off your tortoise shell. You notice that the black smoke is growing thicker, making it harder to focus, harder to concentrate where you guys are at. Bringing us to the top of the order, copious. Uh, the black smoke's getting rather thick here, and you can still tell where everybody's at, but it is starting to get. Is it to so dim that I'm going to roll a disadvantage on a tax spell? Okay, the first round. shooting off. <laughs> uh, ooh. uh, thirteen on that one. Swing and a miss, Felix. You're up uh, again, much like Copious and the others. It's getting kind of cloudy in here. Oh, let's chance of meatballs. Uh, I'm going to shoot an arrow. Let's see if we can hit anything. Curved uh, no, arrows. No, regular arrow. <laughs> Only when I'm shooting at copious will it curved arrows. That's Is why I am. Oh, no, I missed. <laughs> you missed? I missed, yeah. Uh, Leaf, your associates are not having much luck, including the pugilist man fang. It is your turn. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. Gonna have to step up and swing at it. Enter the burning building. The hell? <laughs> 17. That will hit, however, first roll a straight up D20 to make sure you don't get tripped by a vine. <laughs> 17. You're fine. You skip over the vines, stand shoulder to shoulder with Man Fang, the warrior, <laughs> the unarmed warrior against the bats. Seven. Do, 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 do. Nicely done. Man Fang, you and I. You want to go first? Or you want I'll me go to? First and I'm going to spit acid at you. I'm going to play on you. Nicely, Nicely done. done. I you Don't roll one. You're a Cestus at that shop before we left on our adventure. He got uh, the mangoes, I think. Is that what he got? Oranges. Oranges to fight off the scurvy that Felix um, yes. took a hold of. Two die six. Good thought. Poor execution. <laughs> oh, big numbers. Okay. Now I just got a roll to hit you. That, yeah, let's start with that. You're going to punch your grandfather. <laughs> he's not punching. He's spraying acid. Oh, I'm sorry. You're spraying your grandfather. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, how much damage was this? Oh, that's... <laughs> 2d6, six, wasn't it? Was <laughs> you how much? You take four and a half damage. Four damage rounded down. Uh, with Leaf the Druid in play, one and two is Leaf. Uh, three through six is Man Fang. Deuce. Uh, the reptilians have banded together to fight off the druid. <laughs> Rebellion. Uh, 13 plus five is 18. Does that get you? Yep. 
Ouch. Uh, 2d6 plus 3 for the bite. I haven't taken any damage. 6 no. plus 3 is 9, and 2d6 oh. for poison, unless you are immune. 8. Uh, you aren't wearing anything, right? Me? Yeah. I'm wearing a necklace. Which one? The one was in the chest. You do not take the eight hit points of damage from the poison. That's good. Hmm. Spoiler alert, it protects you from poison. Well, then I don't need that. I got acid. Oh, wait, that was acid. Protection. Oh, that was acid. Yeah, no, that was acid. So well, his was acid. Uh, top of the order, uh, Copious, it appears as though Benny Hill is on right now. <laughs> As the reptiles have banded together and going after the druid who started a fire is how the annals of history will report it. Yep, I, I'm yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and try to shoot the basilisk again. <clears throat> uh, by all means, now this round is a disadvantage. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, ah, it was natural 20 on the one. Uh, so 16. Still hits. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> 12 points. Nicely done. Felix. I'm, I'll am i shoot another arrow in there. Oh, no, disadvantage. Don't, don't. disadvantage. Just watch. You don't have to shoot nothing. Just for nice. two. Nothing. I missed. Two. Son of a bitch. Uh, it splits the uprights between man, fang, and leaf. And I turn uh, around and do this. Leaf. I can't see nice. you. Uh, as you do this, leaf, uh, you notice Robert of Zeppelin has leaned into the inn and says, good luck. We're all counting on you. And goes back to, <laughs> back to the town. <laughs> You're up, leaf. I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and in the burning, burning building, I'm going to cast it. I think that is a too. great I like idea. It. I am, I'm solidly oh. behind this plan. So let's see. Because fire always responds well to rapid I know. air movement, and that's exactly why I'm going to do it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to like lay down. As two die eight. Well, I don't think you're going to lay down. I think he's going to blast you through a wall. Yeah. Yeah. It shoves the creature ten feet away. Okay. No, it shoves and every creature ten feet away. Yeah, but yeah. dummy's next to me, spitting acid on my back. <laughs> so it should be all right, right? Ah, uh, yes. Wait, what spell slot are you casting this as? Two. We can do whatever you want now. At level two. Casting as a second level spell? Yeah. So it's three die eight. Three die eight. Oh boy. That's five. And eight is. And seven. 20. 20 points? 20 points and shove it back 10 feet. And what did the fire do? Hey. Is it, is it kind of like a forge? Frank, your mic's off. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, my mic's not off. Uh, no, oh. mine is. Oh, okay. Other so Frank. Frank. Oh, sorry, sorry. Dear Frank. Uh, yeah, he yes. doesn't call me Frank. He calls me Daddy. It, it is now an inferno. Uh, it has accelerated the flame to the extent that you and Manfang and the Basilisk are going to take 1d6 damage. Five damage for all three of you uh, because of the heat. Uh, that will further cloud everything. Uh, Man Fang, it's you and I. The, the room is erupted, uh, and you see the basilisk get thrown 10 feet back as the druid has extended his hands and taken you out of the cone of destruction. Uh, but the intense uh, reverberation of the flames has uh, scorched you for five. Do you want to go? May I shout at this point? Man Fang, grab your axe and get the hell out of here. All right, I'm fine with that. 
Uh, your axe is somewhere in the fire. Give me an investigation oh, check. We're not doing an investigation. I can leave my axe. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is the basilisk has been pushed 10 feet back and will not be able to attack. So you do have a free round to maybe burn your fingerprints off and find your axe or not find your axe. I'm probably axe. not going to find my axe at all, given how good my intelligence is. Because, you know, I have a diploma. It, it will not cost you a thing to well, look. Well, really won't. <laughs> nope. Oh, honest to God. Oh, that's even. It was going to be a 19, but then I got minus three investigations as a 16. That's so good. That's enough. You can still see your axe. All right. Can I grab it and just yank it out, or do I have to? Nope, you can grab it and yank it out. Uh, you and Leaf can exit, making sure you do not roll a one on a d20 and get uh -huh. tripped by vines. Run, Forrest, run! 19. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot I got a roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 17, I'm good. Uh, everybody bails out. Uh, Leslie Nielsen is nowhere to be found. He's clearly gone back to the end or the tavern round. <laughs> Uh, you four are outside and you notice just plumes of smoke beep, beep, beep. <laughs> uh, coming from the end that is on fire. Uh, what would you guys like to do as all four of you made it out and Manfang proudly holds, hey, look, I got my axe back. <laughs> I can do it on my axe. So, the the question is for the this is to the group, the copious is Agus. Do we think that creature is going to come barreling out of here since this place is on fire? That's what I think. I think there's so a good I, chance. I think it's time to hightail it back to the tavern and get behind a locked door. Or we kill it as it comes out. One or the I other. think we can shoot well, it. As it comes last out. time I saw you, you were running the hell away from it. What's going to tell? Why would I think you're not going to do the same we thing? We were running away because we just set the built the bar on fire. That is right. one. You know what? Uh, like Copious persuade him at disadvantage uh, <laughs> that you are not a coward. <laughs> And let Kenny Rogers sing a ballad for you. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, eight. <laughs> no. If you stand by your comments. Let's go to the end of the alley and keep a watch down this way to see if it comes out. I don't want to be that close to it. Well, if we go to the end of the alley, the end, that's the other entrance to the bar, right? It's going to be at the other end of the alley. Yeah. Unless we're heading back towards the temple. So let's just go down there. We'll watch and see if it comes out. That way we've got a chance to get to safety if it does. All right. Well, let's keep an eye on those giant birds. Yeah, we'll do that too. Oh, yeah. Half the March. Birds. Half March. Yeah. <laughs> Half March. Half so, March. Uh, so that I know we're clear, uh, you guys have set this place on fire and you want to go down this alley? Or Which place is on plaza. fire? <laughs> this one. Oh, that one? oh yeah. I thought we were in one over oh, there. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I stand corrected. Uh, no, that. Okay. You are at this right. one is on right. fire. Uh, this is your base right. of operations. So you want Just to, to run that intersection down. right there because we're yeah. not going to get in the back Let's door. Let's gotcha. post up on that. Up. Let's post up on the corner there. Yeah. And we can shoot arrows at the door if we see any movement coming out of those crocodiles or whatever the hell is in there, those reptiles. If anyone asks, Robert set the fire. Yeah. <laughs> That's plausible. It is very plausible. Robert and Haggis, we saw him. Fair enough. You guys run to the middle of the intersection. You prepare yourselves for combat. You look around. Uh, the two parrots are out of here. <laughs> uh, you wait, you hear the cracking of timber as the inferno takes over the inn. Giant plumes of black smoke, since you used an accelerant, are charging into the air. Moments later, a reptilian figure on fire bursts out of the doorway, looks left, looks right, spots you, takes one step, and <laughs> Large claws <laughs> zoom in along the street as an enormous black figure 
grabs a hold of the flaming basilisk and flies up, up, and away as you guys watch. That looks like a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like my dinner. That was barbecue. Oh, barbecue. And now it's you the tell dragon. Tell them to go get that. <laughs> you can go persuade it to uh, give, <laughs> give you some. <laughs> No, but now we know how to now now we know how to get its attention drawn away. Set That's fire right. to Robert, make him run down a street. Let's set fire to the other temple. No, set fire Easy, to the Robert. other gnomes. Set fire to the other gnomes. So yeah, you uh, certainly know how to get its attention. <laughs> yeah, we do. Why you would want to do that is kind of beyond me. Uh, but, uh, right. you understand hey, I'm that. all for going back to the end now and, and healing up and resting. Me I've too. Had for one day. Every, everybody uh, with the worm uh, flying over you, everybody give me a d20 roll, please. If, and I think you had your constitution modifier. Uh, I don't like that idea. 18. Fine. Eight. Uh, 24. Man, Fang, and Leaf, uh, you are not overcome with fear. Felix and Copius, however, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, why should this moment be any different? It's just a big snake. Those two have run out on every battle we've had today. Here, might as well run on this one. Yep, I'm good with that. They are they aren't running at all though. They are frozen in place. No, I'm gonna leave it right gonna, there and I'm in the back of the tavern. Something's running down my leg. I'm sure you was there. <laughs> my ankle is much warmer in the warm. Hey fluid. Felix, wash those pants off before you come in that tavern. Are you guys going to the back door to see if it is no, still front unlocked? Door. Front door. Uh after a few moments of uh, fear it subsides and Felix and Copius catatonically head towards the front. Uh, Leaf and Manfang, you hit the front door of your base of operations. Haggis and Robert uh, look unconcerned as they play cards with each other, and the gnomes are getting hammered <sighs> drunk again. Uh, Pierre, uh, what is Pierre? Lambone. Uh, Pierre Lambone <laughs> uh, says, uh, I smell barbecue. Did you guys get yeah, something? Yeah, it's, 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 it's right out there. It's right outside. Out out back. And with that, I think we call today's scenario. Yeah, I think so. Cool. <laughs> uh, you, you got some more magic stuff, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, Copious, yeah. right? Uh, I don't know what the problem is. So let's, uh, let's do a little final thoughts. Uh, Felix the Rogue, what'd you think? Uh, it was good, yeah. These necklaces, though, I'm Curious to learn more about them. But the loaded dice worked. The loaded dice Apparently. didn't work. They did that uh, time. Didn't work so much for Pierre, but yours seemed to work accordingly. Manfang, what'd you think? I thought it was great. Yeah, you didn't lose your I didn't axe. Lose my axe. I thought it would have <laughs> The only reason I would have gotten the only reason I would have gotten my axe is gonna roll a 19. True. I, I was content with letting it burn up and let you punch things because I'm sure the dragon is very susceptible to bludgeoning damage from your I wanted fists. you to get it because I, did, I, I knew you didn't have another weapon. Because my intelligence and investigation is both minus three. But your diplomacy is off his the charts. weapon is his mind. Uh, uh, and that's and, why it's minus three. <laughs> and don't forget his doctoring skills. Oh, that's yeah. true. Uh, Copious, what'd you think? Ah, uh, that was that's just hilarious. I cursed first. I, I don't think you persuaded me. As <laughs> <laughs> get out, yeah, it's it can be hard sometimes when you're you're trying to stay in character, knowing your character is doing something that's really a horrible idea, but you're like, yeah, you the character will it. totally do this. That's yeah. that's the way the character is. This is the same character that dove into a gelatinous mass at level one to get us a, a dagger. Yeah. Or uh, stayed and listened to the accolades by the Carnival of the Damned. <laughs> so I will give you firm props. You are definitely playing your character. Hey, character. As... The whole time just going, oh, this is not good. <sighs> this is a bad idea, but uh, leave the Druid. What'd you think? Uh, I'm having a ball. I love it. Especially the fact that every time something happens, Copious gets blasted and takes off running, and then Felix follows him. 
That's what friends oh, are for. Oh, yeah, that's what friends are for. We set stuff on fire. There were snakes. I mean, that's reasonable uh, things to run from. Yeah, what thing to run from. Yeah. There were big snakes over there. Did some damage. Oh. Took an early exit. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think you didn't shoot anybody in the ass, though, did you? Uh, uh, copious. Yeah. Copious did. I well, copious did, did, but I, I feel Man didn't. Fang did. <laughs> Man Fang did. spit yeah. all over you. Man Fang spit acid on me, but I don't think Felix shot anybody tonight. No, right, no huh? I didn't. Not in our party. Anyway. That's the first. That's the first time, I think. I, I think you're right. That is oh. the first. Yeah. Folks, follow, <laughs> follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy crap, go ahead. Uh, if you want to join us in Discord, go ahead. It's down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want a spot on uh, the talk show or a one shot, M Hobo Inc., Twitter, Gmail, hit us up. Let us know. Uh, we'll get you taken care of. Thank you, Pirate Dog Dice, for dice that uh, didn't suck for me today. And uh, thank you, oddfishgames.com. Uh, they had a little how to RPG with your cat today, this morning at 1030. Uh, but remember, they also sell Adventure Sense. So if your game stinks, uh, get some Adventure Sense and make it smell a whole lot better. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thank you for joining us. We will catch you Tuesday on the talk show. Let's wave and get the hell out of Dodge. Bye.